And we are super psyched to welcome our newest sponsor, Thunder Road Guitars. Thunder Road Guitars is the Pacific Northwest best source for premium, new, used, and vintage guitars, amplifiers, and pedals. Online or in their Seattle, that's West Seattle, or Portland stores. You'll find fantastic customer service and a terrific vibe. I know because I'm in there a lot. Grab a cup of coffee, swing on in, don't spill your coffee, and check it all out. And now if you use code TOURSTORIES10, you can get 10% off at thunderroadguitars.com. Yes, that's me playing guitar. Hello, big news from our friends over at DistroKid. They now have an app. This app works on iOS and Android, of course, and it's available in the Apple Store and Google Play Stores and all the stores where you buy apps. Go check it out. It's got a lot of cool features. You can upload new releases. You can get notified when you've earned royalties. Awesome. You can withdraw from the app via push notifications. A little dangerous for me, but rad. Anyways, go check it out. It's all at distrokid.com slash app. And don't forget, you can still get 30% off your DistroKid account by going to distrokid.com slash VIP slash tour stores. Have a great one. We would like to celebrate our friends and supporters over at isotope.com. Find makers of audio software for repair, mixing, and mastering. You know their goods. RX-10, Neutron 4, Ozone 11, Nectar 4. Chris and I love them. We use them. And we know you'll love them too. Go to isotope.com and check it all out. And to get your discount, use code FRET10 at checkout. Again, it's I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. Please enjoy your day. Chris, Frankie, Philip, how's it going? It's going good. Joe. How are you? <laughs> yeah, it's good going to see well. you all. Uh, I see you're in a, um, a hotel. I guessed earlier it's an A loft. I identified it by the tape, the pool table with the blue felt. I think, or some sort of yeah, non traditional. Yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> we got it on a uh, ex- <laughs> express deal through Priceline. Oh man, oh, yeah. it, was a, it was a surprise. We didn't get to know. I got a hotels tonight deal. Do you use that? No, I haven't. I haven't used that. Oh, I got a great one in Houston. I should look Check into that. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's a great. What app. did you What did you get? I got uh was it a Thompson hotel for like a hundred and ninety three dollars? Yeah, I don't. I, even, I don't do know. A it's a Thompson. Yeah. Fancy pants. Yeah, that's, I'm not that's... even fancy enough to know what that is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One one time, Frankie got um, an old like classic Kentucky Derby hotel via Priceline that was pretty amazing. Was it the Brown Hotel? I think so. Maybe it was like really tall and really empty. Um, I don't remember what. Like it was. right on the river. Oh, oh, I don't know that one. Yeah, it said it's it was really like tall and really empty. <laughs> it said it was like four stars, but it was definitely. Um, you know, hadn't been updated since like probably like 1990 or something, but it was cool. Yeah. And they had goldfish in the uh, bar. Yeah. yeah oh. In the actual, yeah, been to that one. the, the bar. Oh, so wait, you're like, not talking about like the cheesy snack. <laughs> no. <laughs> live, live, live goldfish. I was like, I, I was like, I've seen goldfish at, at, at bars before. Yeah. You, you'd put your drink down. It would be on top of this, you know, fish. That's a nice touch. Maybe that gave it its fourth star. Maybe it was a three <laughs> until yeah, the bar incorporated four that. Like, but fish tank bar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, one thing I want to do before we get going is can you guys identify your voices with your names? And in fact, just give me your your uh, instrument or duty in the band. Uh, I'm Frankie Broyles, and I play guitar. I'm Philip Frobos, and I play the bass and sing. I'm Chris Yonker, and I play the drums and sometimes sing on tour. Are you singing right now on tour? Yeah, it's been kind of fun. All right. 
I'm pretending to be Izzy on a plastic pyramid. Nice. At the shows where we don't have someone else to do it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And Chris Philip texted me earlier and was kind of just said, Chris is really singing well. Oh, cool. Yeah. Just, just on the side. So <laughs> did that actually happen? Yeah, I'll send you a I'll send you the text. I want I want receipts. Yeah, yeah, I'll screenshot. <laughs> um so where are you? Uh, Oklahoma City. Where are we? Uh, Oklahoma City. Yeah. Oh, all right. I've been to that exact hotel last August. Oh, nice. Cool. <laughs> nice. Um, so you're on tour. Uh, I just realized you're from Atlanta. I listened to your record on Saturday and Sunday running in Atlanta. Oh, whoa. Oh, so. that's crazy. You, what were you, are you, were you on tour? I was on tour. I just got home last night and um yeah it was kind of funny i put it together while i was flying home i was like oh these guys are from atlanta but yeah i was i was running we played at the buckhead theater and i was running around that fancy pants neighborhood listening to your record no. that that is uh, uh isn't buckhead theaters right on peachtree though yeah so you know historic uh area yeah yeah it was nice it's always nice in atlanta for me um did you did you all grow up there? Uh, yeah, I grew up. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. What was your um, What was your connection with music in Atlanta growing up? Did, were you frequently going to shows? Uh, started to when I was like a sophomore, junior in high school, so like fifteen, sixteen. And me and my friends started playing shows at the Drunken Unicorn and stuff like that, going to shows, house shows, and things. What'd you see? Oh, just like local stuff, you know. I remember one of the first uh, bigger shows that I went to in high school was there was a Atlanta is Burning uh, event at the Variety Playhouse that the Black Lips played and the Selman Airs and Deer Hunter played. Right and on. It's been snowed in all of the... Um, That's what I wanted to hear. <clears throat> bigger <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> local acts at the time, I guess. That's rad. That sounds great. Yeah, my we we also uh, basically were hanging out at the Drunken Unicorn like every single night once uh, moved to the city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the great first great place. place. Them. First cool venue to uh, let us play there with me and my friends. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And was it all ages? I can't remember. I don't think I've ever been there or played Eight, there. Eighteen plus. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the door guy decided at some point that, uh, that I was 21. Great. So he stopped giving me X's and so I would just buy the drinks for all my friends. Nice. Yeah. They, they let us play there underage, I think at least once or twice, which was cool. Under right. 18. Same thing for you, Chris. Same scene. Yeah, yeah, I definitely went to Drunken Unicorn a lot when I first moved out to the city because, uh, you know, places like the 529 and the Earl, I wasn't allowed to go to yet right. until I got a fake ID. But uh, I guess previous to that, when I was in high school, I used to go to this really uh, gnarly place called Swayze's um, that was a, a real piece of shit. <laughs> Uh, basically like a place where high schoolers go to smoke cigarettes without their parents finding out. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, definitely saw some crazy shows there and that kind of like, uh, made me, I guess, uh, feel like I wanted to continue playing music. <laughs> right. It just took a couple trips to Swayze's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, I was yeah. like, Ooh, this place is wild. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody had a bizarre Swayze's experience. Yeah. Yeah. The suburban venue. Yeah. Suburban, suburban shock rock venue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like a it's a lot of, ex- there's, there's a lot of expression in the s- suburbs. I, I was, I, you know, I was part of that scene in a couple of different oh, yeah. parts of my life, a couple of different times in my life. And it yeah. was like, it, I even lived in the East Bay and was able to go to like Gilman Street and stuff, but the suburban shows were a lot more shock, you know, just, there's a lot more expression. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. People get wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, you're in Cold War Kids, right? Yeah. Joe? Yeah. I, uh, I, uh, top topically, uh, my our friend Nathaniel, who used to record our records, he and I uh, 
attempted to go to a Cold War Kids show at the Earl when we were underage. Mm-hmm. Um, I played at the Earl. But I did did see you at the Drunken Unicorn, though. You did? So Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if I was in the <clears throat> band for that Drunken Unicorn show. Probably not, but maybe. But I wanted to say I do have a fond memory of uh, playing at the Earl with the Black Keys when oh, yeah. my band opened for them on one of their first tours. That's crazy and to think about. Wild. I know. It was yeah. crazy to think about. And yeah. we went across the street afterwards, and we were a two-piece. It was a band called Magic Magicians. Black Keys, obviously a two-piece. And we'd been hanging the whole tour. It was a month-long tour probably. And we went across the street at the end of the tour, and we were sitting down and having drinks. And I hadn't seen Dan drink, and he didn't drink the entire tour. And I was like, whoa, you're having a drink. And he was like, yeah, I don't <laughs> drink until the tour is over. I was like, all right. Interesting. <laughs> nice job. Uh, a little reward, yeah. a little treat at the yeah. end for a job well done. <laughs> yeah, so di- so disciplined so early. I know. Yeah. That's a secret, I guess. I just yeah. revealed a secret. I, Sorry, guys. Sorry, Dan. I, I thought I was being responsible <laughs> waiting to have a drink till the band before we play. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say lunch. <laughs> no, I'm a little more responsible than that. <laughs> Um, well, we are here to, uh, celebrate, let's say celebrate your new records souvenir. And, uh, it's a crazy guitar wizardry, uh, collection of tunes. I, I really love it. And this type of music, not to pigeonhole you is very much what I have never been able to get away from in my life since the first, uh, second I heard anything British post-punk I'm sure you've heard that a million times but it's just it's almost my soul music if you will um, and uh, but this record is it's just uh, I love it from beginning to end um, the thing that's Thank you. special about it for me is there's a for lack of better words there's a prettiness to this sort of angularity that I've never heard before and in, in listening to similar music. I think it's your chord choices, your melodic choices and stuff. But but it's I also think it's some of the the content and the lyric lyrics are relationship oriented and a lot of the music I've listened to in the past like that sounds like this is sort of either social, broadly social or political most of the time. Anyways, congrats, great record. Thanks um, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and this is your fourth record. How how what, what was your approach to this record coming off your your last record or or your previous records? Did it feel um, different? Yeah, I think so. You know, our last record came out in 2019, so at the end of 2019, and then the pandemic hit, so we had a big big break there that longer than any break we've had since the band started. And uh, coming back to it, I think we we really wanted to make a record that was really energetic and immediate. And also we knew we were going to be working with a a new engineer since our friend Nathaniel, he moved from Atlanta to New York and he wasn't going to be available. So we ended up working with my friend, Chris Sampson, who's an engineer based in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And I think we just wanted to take our sound a little further and kind of polish it a little bit more but not too much have it sound you know clean and clear but also still kind of dirty and and messed up and uh i think he chris really helped us uh chris sampson really helped us achieve that and also chris who's chris yonker right there Mm -hmm. i I don't know where he is on your screen but um he plays drums on the record and this is the first record that we've had another drummer play on um which was really oh, okay. exciting and i think that that added to the sound in a huge way so nice job chris hey thanks and lyrically did you do you feel like it was different do you do you write the lyrics philip or do you all write the lyrics or yeah i i write the lyrics and uh frankie usually kind of helps consult um you know, like historically, I was like, "Should there be cheese in this line or sweets?" Yeah, He's like sweets. 
you know, I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And me- melodically also. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry. What was the question? I was just kind of, uh, I, I was just asking if, if you wrote the lyrics and, and uh, oh. if, if this was a different uh, if, approach for you lyrically. Because well, the one thing I really like about it is, especially again, I am keep, keep harping on this relationship kind of almost romantic idea that is addressed here and there, is that the language you choose to use is, is language between, um, common language between uh, two people in a relationship. And I, it's really cool. Like <laughs> some of it's light, like stupid shit people say to each other. And then some mm-hmm. of it's kind of broader. It's, it's I like the combo. Yeah, I I was kind of trying to push myself to just um, write about just like a few different things. And I do think that like love and relationships was something that I was interested in this time around, Mm -hmm. trying to be a little less detached and a little less annoyed with everyone. Like maybe I was on like the last uh, (laughs) couple of records. And um, I like that annoyed uh, lyricism. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And and, um, also like you're kind of commenting on the uh, specific stuff. I like to kind of imagine that, uh, imagine other people um, specific relationship situations like for instance the mugging that is referenced in one of the songs is like something that happened to a a friend of ours or you know there might be another song where i was you know thinking about another friend or something like that Mm -hmm. so just kind of trying to playfully jump into people's lives yeah here and there well you've you you paint a nice picture. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'd like to play Plastic Pyramid. Is that cool with y'all? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Are you hydrated, baby? What are you, a tall drink of water? Would you go away with me? Well, we could, but why bother? When you know, when you know, when you know, you don't need to see it all. About right? Yeah. Yeah. Why bother? Plastic pyramid. No one cares where you've been. Unbox paradise. Save your money for another slice. Plastic pyramid. Pump it up like an engineer. Unbox paradise. Culture synthesized. Are you deflated, baby? Not gonna lie, I feel pretty. Small. This world is far beneath me. The Sphinx, the Nile, I ordered it all. When you know, when you know, when you know, you want to have it all. Little effort, no cost. Get your very own plastic pyramid. No one gets where you've been. Thank you. 
a that's a nice journey that song both sonically and lyrically it's 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 <laughs> really great it has a good arc to it thanks um thank you how do you um we were just talking a little bit about uh your your lyric writing duties and, and other duties in the band but how do you typically track or or prepare for a recording like with this song we kind of just demoed it out like three two or three different ways and it was you know taking parts out and putting new parts in and just kind of seeing what worked and then i think after the second one i just kind of cut it all up and made it kind of into what it is on the record and then we mm -hmm. made a demo of that and then i think that's what philip wrote the lyrics to and then uh then we all got together and practiced it for a couple of days <laughs> and then just mm -hmm. went into the studio and tried to get it down which you know yeah went, went well so by the time uh, you yeah. get we just we just go ahead oh i was just gonna say we decided to bring the cowboy part back from a earlier version also because yeah like, i was i was not letting that one drift away <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice i was like bring that cowboy part back please <laughs> yeah it um yeah there's a there's a um speaking of that cowboy part there's a cup there's like a classic rock part i think on the last tune it's like oh, the yeah. hook the but it reminds mm -hmm. it's very classic rocky to me but it's for one a great ender um but it's just I start hearing it and I was like, oh, this is a little interesting. It's like kind of a classic rock kind of riffage, but then it keeps going and going and going and going. It's rad. I love Thanks. it. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was worried about it um, going on for too long, but it uh, goes on for as long as it goes, I guess. It's perfect. <laughs> um, and, and on this record, I, I listened pretty thoroughly to your old records, but this record, Chris, uh, you the, this being the first record you drummed on, I noticed yeah. that the drums are a little more open on this record. They're yeah. they're not quite as tight, and it, and on paper that might not work with maybe your guys' style of music, but it works really well. I mean, it might go to your engineer friend, um, but it's it's a really rad yeah. mix. Yeah, Chris did a really good job of like. Uh, kind of bridging two worlds of miking the drums like where he has this very like almost like institutional understanding of like how to properly record drums yeah. you know by the book but then we also kind of kept forcing things on him like using the onboard microphones of a task cam that all the demos are recorded on as one of the microphones just centered right over the bass drum right. so you get that really uh shitty <laughs> sound that's so familiar right uh yeah. to us and being able to like blend that in with the drums uh and like uh yeah, i don't know we we just did a lot of playing around until we found something that we felt like wasn't too clean and polished but like was still uh taking the drums a little bit forward from the previous records. Right. Yeah. And I guess, I guess the reason I, I, I noticed it was because it does, now that you say that it has that effect of um, the attack of probably that kind of filthy mic and mm -hmm. that's there and it sounds great. But then like either the headphone experience or something, I was like, Oh, the drums are a little more open than, yeah. than they seem to be it's still got the uh, it's still got the the body of yeah. being recorded with like nice mics it's great uh and yeah the, and by the way the record is rad on headphones like really good headphones thank it's you really thank you i walked around with these these mm -hmm. headphones on this on the streets when i wasn't running of your city so <laughs> i apologize if i am embarrassed myself or you guys um i think you experienced it the right yeah, way yeah i think that's cool yeah, yeah. Did um and do you did they change much from the or typically do you do your songs change much from demo to tracking? So like the basic tracking is really, I guess there were a lot of overdubs that I that we added after um, mm -hmm. finishing all the basic tracking and a lot of that stuff was not on the demos, <clears throat> but they were like ideas that I had that I just hadn't attempted to add, and some of them worked and some of them didn't, but. Uh, yeah those are really the main differences and then little lyrical things little melody little vocal melody things would change sometimes 
just because the demos were right. so like sure dirty and stuff like you could get away with some of that and then once it was cleaned up it was like oh this doesn't work so well right yeah i think plastic pyramid is like the only song that took on like multiple iterations like we actually played it live once and it was like kind of a completely different song mm -hmm. um and then yeah it, it that one that one changed multiple times but for the most part all the other songs yeah just kind of the demo was the structure and then we just put a de put decorations on top of it yeah also verdict verdict changed yeah you're right after being familiar with your record and and talking to you about this i want to hear those demos yeah you can put them out <laughs> put them out in a few years yeah we've yeah. We've, yeah. we've talked about yeah. it we've got got demos at least one demo of every song so yeah um, the other thing that I, I'm enjoying with Omni right now is your visualizer and your and your videos and, and sort of your your visual aesthetic. Do you guys are you in charge of that? You have a you work with someone else? It's always been uh, Frankie making all of the videos up until um, this record where we brought in our friend uh, Zach Piles and uh, another guy named AJ also helped uh, with making the videos as well. But yeah, we kind of just tried to build on what Frankie had done with the past and try to, I don't know, take that aesthetic and figure out how to, you know, put more brains on it and a little bit more resources and, and yeah, and just see what came out the other side. You still conceptually direct driving the ship too. Well, I love it. It's great. It's cohesive, yeah. of course, but it's, I, I like the, yeah. I like this campaign, if you will. Yeah, and, and Chris yeah, did the um, the visualizer one all on his own. That was kind of oh, okay. Weird. It's great. Yeah, that visualizer yeah, that yeah. One was, was weird. Yeah, we were really <laughs> yeah. excited I, yeah, about I, that. And that, which song yeah. is that for? The visualizer, International Waters. International. That's right. A great song. Um, so you're on tour right now. How's it going out there? Really, it's going really good. Really you, well. Yeah, we were we were. Um, you know we hadn't we haven't really toured in a while so we didn't know what to expect really um mm -hmm. at all these you know different shows but the, the turnouts have been great um like we just played in cleveland at a hot dog place and that was one of the coolest shows of the tour so really <laughs> yeah that was fun Are you yeah it was ra rowdy really cool oval shaped bar like all the way, bar, seats all the way around. Oh man, why didn't I go yeah, there? You can put, you Happy can put dog. Fruit Loops on a hot dog if you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> What's it called? Happy Dog. Happy Dog. In Cleveland. Happy Dog. Yeah. yeah. And you playing in Oklahoma City tonight? No, we're just on our way well, to no. Texas. So. Oh okay. So is this tour wrapping up, ish, or after Texas? Yeah, we. Yeah. We're gonna play yeah, we have one more show. In in uh, New Orleans, yeah. All right. And then what's in store for the rest of the summer? Uh, we're in April. We're going to the UK for like 10, 12 shows or something. I don't know how many shows it is, but then, and then we're doing the West coast in June. Have you been to the UK much? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're excited to, to get back there. It's been, yeah. all, it's been since 2019, I guess that we were last there. Um, all right. Well, congrats on this record. Thanks so I love much. it. Thanks so it's much. It's great. And yeah, um, thank you. I will see you in June. I'll actually be home if you come to Seattle. I assume you will because yeah. Sub Pop would make you come to Seattle. It's required. <laughs> yeah, they would. They would be upset. Yeah. All right. Well, travel safe while you're out there, and uh, good luck with everything. Tell England I said hello. Oh, did someone just oh, did someone just knock over the giant Jenga thing? Oh, no, I, 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 a no. Cart, cart was wheeled, a laundry cart was wheeled by. All right. Maybe, well, maybe you should pipe in this uh, lobby music for all your podcasts. I might. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will get a sample of it. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, it was great talking to you. Um, I'm glad Ryan Katner introduced me to Philip over the, uh, over the text messages. I'm glad we got to connect. Um, again, travel safe out there. And I hope to see you on the West Thanks Coast. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you so much. It was nice to meet you. Nice to yeah. Meet you. yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye. Right.
else's song Take it as a compliment From someone who didn't know what they meant On the spot they needed something to say It's a 